All right, so today I got a rigid gas-powered air compressor. This thing's been sitting for a while. It's a mess. Uh, carburetor all messed up. It's so rusty, you can't turn the throttle. It was stored really poorly. The tank is clean. I don't know if you can see in there, but everything else is just kind of a mess. So I'm gonna start taking the carb off, clean this, and then see what else is wrong. So because there's not much room, I'm actually going to take this muffler guard off just to see, and maybe the muffler off to gain access to here because it looks like I have to take apart some of the plumbing on the valves and that's not something I really want to do, but if I need to, I need to. I'm a little worried that these are gonna break because I had another Subaru engine that was not taken care of at all and everything just snapped on the throttle plate when I took it off. Let me find a different wrench. <laughs> we'll see what I can take off easily. I'm not too excited about this because it looks like I might have to take the motor off to slide all of these components out. Uh, yeah, this looks like it's going to be a pain in the butt. Actually, so this is a braided line down here. Let me see. Yeah, this line's braided. So I think if I take it off here, I should be able to drop this and get enough, enough space. So I move this wheel over and it looks like I can maybe get this bolt off. Uh, not exactly sure. So this bolt's coming off. Okay, so we definitely have to take this valve off or move it. Because I tried to turn. No. tried to turn this and the whole valve moved. Uh, it needs more clearance. I think I'm just gonna take this off. Yeah. I don't know if there's any springs or anything in here, so I'm kind of being careful. No, but this activates and deactivates 
the pressure mechanism, if I remember right. That one. So it's twisting that whole thing, so I gotta take these off. So it doesn't break. Oh shoot, I gotta take the tank off. So I'm gonna take the tank off to get to these bolts. Because I don't wanna break anything. I don't know if this works, but better safe than sorry. That's what I was afraid of. One of the tank bolts just snapped. <sighs> Shoot. Oh boy. I don't know what to do. That one moved. So actually, now, you know what? I think what I can do is undo, can try to lower that, drop this maybe. Hello. You work with your okay, so what I did was I cleaned this up. It needs to be adjusted more, but at least it's functioning again. To get this carb off, you gotta get that side bolt or side. Uh... These are always a pain to get. Actually, let me take this off. Uh... Okay. That clip and the fuel line sometimes a little tricky let me so you got to like, undo the clip and push the tubing off and then usually this is all corroded I'm sure it's disgusting and corroded problem here is, of course, um, it's not going to come off because of those. Yeah. So I'm going to try to take the studs out. So I'm going to double nut it. And hopefully they'll come out because I don't really want to... <laughs> start to disassemble everything on this motor because it looks pretty darn rusty. So what happened? The guy stored a, a bag of lye on top and it broke. And that's why. All right, so that's moving. Great. So we stored a bag of lye on top. It broke, and that's why some of the stuff is all rusty, even though this unit was <laughs> like brand new. And 
then cleaning it up and putting it back together is the easy part. <laughs> Assuming you know this other one comes off and doesn't break. That's the nice easy part. I've never had one of these compressors before. I have the other version too. I found it. Uh, motor wasn't running. One of the reasons I really didn't want to touch that was I don't want it to start leaking, but no choice. Something like this, I'm always kind of torn. Cause it's like, well, I'd really love to clean it up a lot, but sometimes once you start, everything's a disaster. And then once you start getting the rust off, things are breaking. So let's see if this, how this goes. Finally, this one broke loose, so I can pull the stud out to clean the carb. So I already un disconnected the carb, it's just the two plus the fuel. For some reason, this wrench does not want to grab these bolts nicely. I don't know why. So this came off nice. It's filthy. It's 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 pretty bad. But yeah, we'll see if it cleans up nicely or or what. All right. So good and bad. I went to try the recoil. It broke. So this rope. I've even I've never had this happen. I'm sure it's because. It was stored like that. Uh, problem is, I don't know if I can even get a wrench in here. Yeah, this is turning into a real nightmare. Shoot.
boy. I don't know what to do. Oh, come on. Okay, I'm gonna shut this off. I get that so this is turning into a disaster. Couldn't get the, the wrench there, so I had to take the motor off um, just to get the bolts for the recoil starter. So I'm not really loving this thing right now. I'm thinking while, while I have this off, I might as well uh, <clears throat> clean the carburetor and put it on because it's so much easier. The carburetor, somebody replaced it. It was an aftermarket one. It looks like it's aftermarket because I don't see any Manu uh, Manuki labels on it. I was only able to get one bolt off this one while the engine was on. That's, that's how tight this thing is. Not the best design, this one. All right, I'm going to take that last one off, and then I'll restring it. So this was a miserable job, because it, the old one, it was all jammed in here. I didn't really want to take this off because so I don't recommend taking this off because then sometimes the spring pops out and it's a real big pain to get back so what I like to do is just manually spin it by hand until it's these are kind of lined up so you, and I tie this end off yeah I needed two hands otherwise I would showed you so I tied that off and then I just feed it in this way so this cord was actually a little thicker, so it was hard, pretty hard to do. And then when after you're done, make sure you can pull it all the way and it retracts nicely. Because uh, if you, you know, spin this too many times, you'll use all the tension in the spring. So recoil's good. Time to put this back on. Probably put the motor back on. So let me uh, grab these bolts. I didn't take that bracket off because I, I took it off on here because it was a bolt and it was easier. That's an Allen head. I didn't want to strip it because this motor is a bit rusty. You can see that that fuel tank bolt snap there. Only other thing is on this one, usually on Subarus, the recoil goes like that. On this to line up with here, uh, it goes you know, at a rotated 90 degrees from what's the usual. And hopefully this still works. It's pretty rusty, so I didn't know. And I'm just gonna kinda leave it at that. Okay.
I'm gonna leave them all loose till till all four are in. So part of the problem with this motor is it's just rusty. So I'm real hesitant to take anything extra off in fear that I'm gonna break it. I am gonna clean up the gunk from there and turn it back in a bit. Well, this turned into a, another lost cause motor. So it's actually cracked. Uh, that's the side over here that is missing and this has a massive crack. So I think that's actually why it ran so bad. I can't believe it even ran, but uh, there it is. I actually have another motor with a good valve uh, of a good head but I'm just kind of fed up with this project so you can see it's fine there but oh well so this one it's gone it's a goner and uh, I'm just gonna sell it for parts because I'm fed up